Wendy, Canada, says, "Hi, food fans. Do you know the word gastronaut? It's a person who travels and tries different foods. That's me. I love something delicious called hachelslag. It's from the Netherlands." It has small, sweet pieces of chocolate you put on bread for breakfast. My boyfriend thinks it's disgusting. Do you like foods from different countries too? What kind? How many new dishes do you try each week? Saraya, Bali, says, "I'm a gastronaut too." I love to try different foods from all over the world. My favorite food is tom yum soup from Thailand. It's a spicy soup with shrimp and vegetables. I often have it for lunch. It's a very healthy meal. I add chilies to mine to make it extra spicy. Peter, South Africa. Says, "Hi, Wendy. Do you know about bunny chow? It comes from South Africa. It's a loaf of bread, but you take the middle of the bread out and put spicy beef or chicken inside. How much meat do you need? It depends on how big the loaf is. We usually eat it for lunch or dinner." Marlena, Venezuela, says, "My favorite food is empanadas. They are delicious. You can make them with corn flour, water, and salt. You can put cheese, meat, chicken, anything you like inside. Then you fry them." Some people eat them as a snack. My mom thinks they are unhealthy because you fry them. Ben, Scotland, says, "I think I'm a gastronaut too. Do you know a dessert called chendol from Malaysia? It's really unusual. It's green rice noodles, coconut milk, and sugar." You can also add fruit. It's very sweet. It looks like green spaghetti. Here we are at the Central Food Market. It's a Saturday morning, and it's very busy now. Food markets like this sell cheap food, but is it healthy? Let's ask that woman selling food. This smells delicious. What are you making? I'm making falafel. They're a Middle Eastern snack food. Do you want to try one? Yes, please. Okay, here you go. So this is the falafel. There is salad here, and this is pita bread. Oh, yum! It's delicious, spicy too. What's in falafel? They are balls made of chickpea flour. Are they healthy? This falafel is healthy because we grill it. Fried falafel has more fat and calories. Falafel is also vegan. There's no meat and no dairy in it. They are really delicious. Thank you. No problem. Okay. Now let's ask this man what he's eating. Excuse me, what are you eating? Oh, this is bibimbap. It's Korean. It's a very healthy meal. What's in it? Well, this one is a vegetarian dish. Um, there's an egg on top, and there are vegetables and rice. It's delicious. So the egg is protein. The rice is a carbohydrate, and there are vegetables: carrots, spinach, and mushrooms. 
It looks like a balanced meal. Yes, and it's only five dollars. So the food at this market is delicious, and some of it is healthy too. So first, the ingredients you need are two cups of flour, one cup of water, and oil. You also need vegetables. Here, I have one cup of delicious red tomatoes, one orange pepper, one green pepper, one cup of corn, and one purple onion. You also need two cups of yellow cheese. To make the pizza dough, put the flour in a bowl. Add salt and pepper. Then add the water and oil. Mix with a spoon or fork. Then use your hands to make a ball. Roll the ball into a circle. Put the pizza dough on a baking dish. Next, slice all the vegetables into small pieces. Don't mix them together. Put the cheese on the pizza dough first. Make a row of tomatoes, then orange peppers, then corn. Next, add green peppers. Then add purple onions. Bake at two hundred degrees Celsius for twenty minutes. Then. Slice. Eat this pizza for lunch. It's also great for a party. Eating out in Paradisos. Many people like to eat out in a neighborhood called Paradisos. There are a lot of bars and restaurants and food from around the world, like Thai. Japanese, Greek, French—you name it. Some of the restaurants are great for snacks, but there are some expensive restaurants too. It's hard to know what's good and what's not, so here is our guide to the places we like in Paradisos. Matilda's, vegetarian restaurant, great for lunch. Healthy food. We like the mushroom burger and the delicious avocado salad. We don't like the carrot cake. There are only five tables. Twenty dollars for lunch. Three stars. Yu Garden. Chinese restaurant. Open evenings only. We like the chicken noodles and egg fried rice. We don't like the noise. The open kitchen. Thirty dollars for three dishes. Four stars. Fred's Fish. Fish and seafood restaurant. Lunch and dinner. Outdoor tables in the summer. We like spicy shrimp spaghetti with tomatoes. We don't like the vegetable dishes. Small portions. Forty to sixty dollars. Three and a half stars. Encore. French cafe. And restaurant, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. We like the steak and fries, so tasty. We don't like nothing. We love everything here. Twenty-five dollars in the cafe, seventy dollars in the restaurant. Five stars. There 
but not there. Virtual travel. Would you like to visit another continent? Europe, maybe? See Italy or Greece. Or how about a country in Africa, like Kenya? If you want to save time and money when you travel, here's a tip. You need to try virtual tourism. But what is virtual tourism? And how does it work? When you plan to visit a new place, go online and take a virtual tour first. You can use a virtual reality headset and a computer to take a tour. You don't have to use a computer if you have an app on your smartphone. A virtual tour gives you all the sights and sounds of a place. Take a tour of a street market in a city like Delhi, or enjoy tourist attractions in Rio de Janeiro. You can decide what you like to do before you go. Many people enjoy traveling more when they plan with virtual tours. They like spending time on things that interest them. With virtual tours, they can spend more time on the things they love when they finally get to their dream vacation destination. Today, we're on the streets of cities around the world. We're asking people if they like high season or low season in their city. Excuse me, Radio English Today. Can I ask your name? Hello. Yes, it's Manuel. Think about tourism in your city. Do you like the high season or low season? Well, I live in Barcelona, Spain. We get a lot of tourists every year during the summer. Tourists are good for the economy, but it can be very busy and noisy. I like the winter when it's quiet. You can always get a table at a restaurant. Thank you. Hello. What is your name? Andra. Where are you from? I'm from Reykjavik, the capital of Iceland. Do you like high season or low season in Reykjavik? It's very dark in the middle of winter, and we don't get many tourists then. My favorite time of year is the middle of summer. We have lots of visitors, and all the cafes and restaurants are open. There's a lot to do. Thank you. Here's one more person. Can I ask your name? I'm Victor. Victor, do you like the high season or low season in your city? In Lima, Peru, we get tourists all year, but the high season is October to March. That's in the summer. I like it then because you meet lots of new people from other countries. It's my favorite time of year. Thank you, Victor. Jose, I travel a lot. I like to go to cold countries, like Canada. I usually go for work. When I go there, I take a jacket and gloves. You have to stay warm. Isabella. When I go on vacation, I like to go to the beach. I like swimming, and I always pack a swimsuit. When you go to the beach, you should take something warm for the evening. I take a sweater. Mike. I should travel more. I like to go to the mountains. I pack boots because I like to hike. I don't take swimsuits or shorts, but I always take lots of socks. You change your socks a lot when you're in the mountains. Amal. You should look good on vacation. I like to go to interesting cities. When I go on a trip, I take nice blouses. I wear them when I go out to restaurants. 
I also pack jeans, of course. Those are the clothes I usually take. Detourism. Love or hate it, Venice is a very popular tourist destination. Some people say it's too popular. Around 30 million people visit Venice, Italy every year. The problem is, they all want to see the same things. The canals, St. Mark's Square, the Doge's Palace. The small city of Venice, population 50,000, attracts large crowds of visitors every year. Tourism is important for the economy of the city, but it's very expensive to keep Venice in good condition. To deal with this problem, some people suggest detourism. A detour is a short trip in a different direction. Detourism shows tourists attractions that most people don't visit. That way, tourists aren't always in the same place at the same time. For example, when you move away from the canals, Venice also has interesting markets, restaurants, and shops. And there are unusual attractions, such as the multicolored houses on the island of Barano and the Lazaretto Nuevo, home to the Vampire of Venice. It's a very different side of Venice. Detourism can lead to many different kinds of vacations and new experiences. Have fun! An inspiration for all. Malala Yousafzai was born in 1997 in the Swat Valley in Pakistan. Her father was an educator, and he wanted his daughter to get an education. But in 2007 and 2008, the schools for girls closed in her region of Pakistan and Malala stopped going to school. Malala wrote a blog for British TV about her life that year. She wanted all girls to have the opportunity to get an education. She became well known in Pakistan. Then, in 2011, Malala's school finally opened again. Malala's blog made some powerful people angry. On October 9, 2012, Malala was shot on her way to school. She was only 14 years old. Malala was lucky. She survived, and her family took her to England. When she was better, she started school there. She continued to talk about education for girls in Pakistan, and she went around the world to speak. In 2013, she started the Malala Fund. In 2014, she won the Nobel Peace Prize. The next year, a film of her life called He Named Me Malala told her story. In spring 2017, she went around the world on her girl power trip and met world leaders. She asked them to support education for all girls. In autumn 2017, she started to study at Oxford University. Malala continues to inspire young people around the world.